All right, so we're going to make a uh, canteen out of this uh, snowman configured or Santa Claus configured um, birdhouse gourd or bottle gourd. And it's dried out, it's cleaned. Um, I got purchased this uh, online from somebody on uh, Etsy because um, I didn't grow any, but this has plenty of seeds inside to where I could possibly grow my own and uh, have an opportunity to make as many of these as I want. Uh, anyways, um, there's all kinds of different things you can do with these birdhouse gourds. Uh, they're, they're just, it's just endless. If you just do a search on Pinterest.com and uh, look up birdhouse gourd art or birdhouse gourds, and you'll just see all kinds of stuff that people do with, with these things. It's beautiful. It's awesome. So in this particular case, we're just going to make kind of a rustic looking uh, can canteen, functional canteen. And so the first thing that we need to do is um, we're going to cut it open. And so I've kind of used a pencil and kind of marked about where I'm going to use my cutting tool to uh, get it, get the, an opening going. First thing is what your, what your gourds uh, that you're going to use in as many different shapes is you want something that's going to stand pretty uh, solidly by itself. Um, so this will wobble over of course but um, for the most part once you set it down it stands upright. Okay, So that's, uh, that's a pretty uh, basic but important criteria. So I'm going to take my cutting tool here and um, I've used um, stone tool to abrade all the way around to open this up. So you could do that on a primitive standpoint. Uh, but for now, just for, expedition, for, for expediency, I'm just going to use my um, cutting tool here that has a nice little chisel point. This will make getting in here kind of easy. So I'm just going to kind of above the line slightly. It's going to kind of, you know, wedge or press an opening in and just kind of uh, do dotted line all the way around until I can re release this top here. set this free and there it is so this is good um, so I'm gonna go ahead and close my blade here for safety um, and then I can uh, once we empty this out I can shape and sand this down and, and kind of uh, mold the opening a little better but for now we have uh, some insides that we need to get out and uh, this portion here seems to have a membrane in here so what you need is you'll need some sort of like stick or something like that that you can kind of poke and um, help free some of the, the bits inside. And it, the thing with the opening is you kind of want to make opening like it not too big but not too small. If it's too small you can't get anything in or out. If it's too big it's hard to, to you know make a plug for it. So kind of look in there if I can get some light shining in there make sure I got everything and then we're gonna dump this insides out yep and these are nothing but seeds a lot of cool seeds there so we'll be able to use these seeds and grow more uh, grow our own birdhouse boards for other projects free the rest of this stuff out. So I'm going to work to free the rest of these bits out here. Alright, so I think we got pretty much everything out of here. We got something still hanging on in there, but I think we got another, we got another remedy for that. So I'm going to store these seeds away uh, so that the uh, we can uh, plant these sometime and uh, it'll be pretty cool. Plenty of seeds. I got. A, I actually got a bunch of gourds, so I'll just put these in the bag here for later. Alright, so the next step to help get rid of all the other residue that's inside of the, the gourd, gourd here is uh, I've got some gravel that um, you go ahead and feed in here. Got gravel, some pebbles here that I want to put inside of the uh, gourd here. Like so. And uh, it's winter time, so finding gravel is kind of a 
going to be a bit tough. Uh, snow on the ground and all that, but I kind of went and got a bag of gravel for another project actually. So I actually had this stored away. So yeah, I just want to kind of put some pebbles in here. Make sure. All right. And then what we want to do is we want to shake it up. It's like Morocco. So it looks like we got it all clear here. Um, what I'm going to do now is kind of shape the edge, the uh, lip, and uh, get it nice and smooth and flat. And uh, again, in a primitive situation, use some sand or uh, a nice rough rock, some sandstone. I've got sandpaper. I'm inside, obviously. And so just kind of just use the sandpaper to abrade down the lip and smooth it out. So here's our opening here, kind of sanded down. Wasn't too difficult to do. And uh, now the big challenge is to create a, um, a plug. And um, if you have cork, you know, an old cork that would fit, that would work just fine. Um, but we're gonna pretend like we're out in the middle of nowhere, or at least a place that has bottle, <laughs> bottle gourds, gourds around, laying around. Um, and we need to make a plug so that all our water doesn't uh, leak out on us. So before we do that, we're gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and decorate or stain this. Uh, I'm gonna use some walnut dye, some walnut stain that I concocted some years ago. And I have a video on that. I'll put the link below if you're interested. And um, we're just gonna just get a brush here and just kind of paint it down, give it a little uh, give it a little color here and again you can decorate it however you want to you know wood burn it be as fancy as you want use regular paint use varnish use regular commercial stain however whatever you want to do or leave it as is either way so we're going to stain this and then we're going to work on making a plug all right so again nothing spectacular here just going to add a layer or a coat of this black walnut stain and it's made from the uh, husks of black walnuts and everybody knows that has played with them that when you break them open uh, the green husk will stain your fingers and it'll like they'll stay like that almost the whole day for a couple of days so it's a pretty effective stain or dye some people that brown hair and you know use a black walnut to dye their hair as a matter of fact so I don't have any hair so I don't have to worry about that uh, I have some grays coming up I suppose I could probably okay. I'm gonna let this sit while we work on creating a plug. All right, so I have a piece of elm from an old project here that should do the trick and I'm kind of sizing it. And it looks like it will be just right with some minor adjustments and some, some carving. And so while I have the length, I'm gonna set this aside here. While I have the length on this, what I want to do is um, 
I want to create a groove because we're going to need to attach a lanyard uh, to this, um, to our uh, plug. And so what I, what I need to do is I need to create a groove or a slot for the uh, lanyard to fit into so we don't lose our string. Now I have something that's kind of got some character here. Uh, a little gouge in here, some uh, injury to the branch here. I don't want that for my plug, just in case. It's, it's kind of seems kind of cool, but I, I, I don't want that. So I'm gonna operate below here, and what I want is a little bit below that. Um, what I want to do is I'm gonna take my cutting tool, and I want to kind of go and around. I want to go around the circumference of my um, my stick here. And I'm just kind of gouging in as I roll it, so I have a nice, um, smooth, even, straight uh, line until I meet the other side, okay? Like so. Now this blade has a fillet edge or a straight edge, and for this next step, I want something with a little bit more uh, serration, a little bit more bite, so to speak. Um, and again, primitively, you would use stone tools, a piece of glass or something like that. Um, so I'm going to take my, this, my, 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 my spiderco here has a wee, wee hawk blade here. It's got a nice chisel tip, fillet edge, and then it goes into the serrations here, which I like. Um, Benchmade also has a few that has what they call the wee hawk edge, wee hawk blade. So I'll just kind of grind this down a little bit, or rather through the groove. To deepen it and then all the way around until I meet the other side and again I'm not trying to cut through I'm just trying to deepen the, 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 the starter cut okay and once we've done that because the uh, elm is pretty medium grade wood so this will saw through fairly easy fairly quickly all right and so while we, while we have the length here i'm gonna go ahead and i'm gonna start to take my tool here and i want to start to um cut upwards okay so i'm gonna give you a close-up this chip here see i want to start cutting upwards all the way around so i'm gonna start just kind of chipping in that really easy because this is a kind of a medium wood it's not like pine which again let me speak on that if you're going to use wood for a plug make sure it's not a poisonous wood or wood that's going to give your water something taste some nasty taste like locust black locust or pine you don't want that so be mindful that you're using a wood that is safe elm is safe um, oak would be safe a little hard to cut into walnut would be safe you know, there might be some tannins in it, but, you know, it's nothing that should really hurt you unless you have a re re allergic reaction to it, okay? So be careful what you put in your mouth in the, in the woods, okay? Everybody's body chemistry is different, so. Um, and you read the books and stuff like that, they say, oh, edible or non-toxic or non-venomous, poisonous. You know, not to that person who tested it, but maybe to the person who is trying it out, so. Proceed with caution with putting stuff in your mouth out in the bush. Because your body may respond to things differently. So, yeah, just kind of a nice rustic little, little lip here. Because that's all we really want. We don't want anything too extravagant or too deep. Nothing too fancy. And I could have made it real fancy. I could have gone all the way around again and made it a a, a, a true um, how do you say um, a trough, you know, all the way around with with you know both sides nice straight walls. But I like to do it this way because it works and uh, it's nice and simple. It's easy. And if you got stone tools or something like that, you know, you don't have time to do all that fancy stuff or you don't want to make the time to do it. So that's it. So now from here, 
what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to take another cutting tool off camera and cut this to the size I want, cut this to the length that I want, and we're going to start to size for a plug to our, um, our, uh, our bottle here. And I may add another coat just to make it a little darker, and then uh, we'll keep going.